There is no doubt businesses need to make money, but it's not all about money. Listen to Perrin BD explain how business is about art, community, and the underpinnings of our way of life on this NSP short. One of the things that's often missed when people look at business is, is the role of business as a, as a creative activity. Um, people see it as being bloodless and uh, mathematical in its nature. Uh, it's not for the people whom I've met who are the most successful business people. They see it as a form of artistry in itself where uh, their efforts, their creativity can uh, create something that wouldn't have existed before or can build it to a size or in a form factor that just wouldn't have, have been possible. Uh, so some people may go into the arts or uh, into other elements of activity. Uh, for many people in the business community, this is a means of, of expressing their own creativity and their, their desire to build something. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's one of the things, at least in uh, I experienced inside the military, was inability to maybe hold a couple of ideas um, in your mind at the same time is that, yes, businesses need to make money for a whole bunch of practical reasons, but that's not the only thing that people are in business for. There's a creative aspect for it uh, in terms of defense. I, I bump into a lot of people in the defense industry who, who truly want to see the men and women of the Canadian military have the best capabilities yes. they can have. Yes. Um, and that I think that goes across all types of industries as people want to contribute in a meaningful way uh, through business, through their creativity. Uh, it's a whole an outlet for a, a lot of things, not just making money. Absolutely. And the survival of our free enterprise system depends upon that. Um, the, the capitalist system, I'm a strong believer in capitalism. It's a, it's a highly efficient system. It's one that, that I believe promotes freedom. It's one that, uh, that obviously raises living standards both in Canada and around the world. But it doesn't exist for its own sake. It exists because of what it can do. And if we lose touch with the, with the connection that we have with a larger society, it can die. When the, when the day comes that ordinary people feel that the system isn't serving them, that it's beneficial only to a small group of people who are in control of it, the system will die. And as a result, then, we need those of us in the business community to continue to see it, to see our businesses as part of the broader society and as contributing to the betterment of society in a whole variety of different ways. That was the ethic that, that really drove my grandfather and uh, he never saw a distinction between the, between the company and the community in which it operated. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, during the Depression, um, you know, this was hard times for the company. But he worked to, to keep one breadwinner from every family on the payroll. He said, you know, it's the, it the guys on the line that made this company what it is during the good times. We have an obligation to them during the, the tough times. And... He always felt that way. He felt that, that we had a responsibility both as a family and as a business to continue to put back into the broader, the broader community. So um, there were a couple of children, a couple of boys who were drowned in, in the Grand River that bisects Fergus. It runs right down the center of Fergus. Uh, my grandfather was horrified by this, and so uh, he built uh, the, a municipal swimming pool for the town built it across from our lower plant, which was on the Grand River, in the downtown section of Fergus, ran uh, heating conduits across from the boilers in the plant, so, the, uh, so there was actually heated water for the swimming pool. And f he ran it at a loss out of Beatty Brothers' money to make sure that, that anybody in town would be able to use this municipal pool and nobody would have to swim in the river again. Mm. And uh, as a result, Fergus became... Uh, if not the first, one of the first small communities in Ontario to have its own swimming pool. Uh, this wasn't something that, that was a PR gesture on his part. He felt an obligation as somebody who could make a difference to do so. Yeah, the, the PR gesture is, a, is an interesting one because my, my sense is these days is um, there's probably not too many altruistic gestures that um, escape the the cynicism of, well, that you're just doing that for PR. 
as opposed to people actually are genuinely doing it to try and make the communities better. Yeah, I'll give you an example. It, it too often it, it looks like it's something that's being dreamed up by the PR department right. uh, when when companies do things. But when the depression hit, my grandfather had just brought bought a brand new car. He took it and he put it up in blocks on the garage in, in, in the garage, and he said, "Until the men in the line can afford to drive to work, I will not." Oh, and he walked to work like like everyone else. Um, one, you know, he would go back to to the plant in the middle of the night often. And uh, one night he was walking through the plant during the depression and found somebody stealing coal from from the furnaces. Could have had him arrested. Instead, what he said to him was, so uh, you'll damage your furnace. It's the wrong type of coal. And the next day he arranged to have a, a ton of coal delivered to this person's home. Um, this wasn't something done for publicity or for to try to create good feelings. It was because he felt he had an ob- obligation and that that obligation was particularly acute because everything that we had was the product of other people's effort and ideas and, and dedication. 